Jesus Christ, really? Don't forget to become a member of Unrelent Gaming's Patreon for exclusive manga content and early access. Isn't that right, Seth? I already joined his Patreon today. Tons of great stuff on there, actually. But did you really have to blow up the city? Mm, yes. You blew up the domino. You blew up the domino and you're laughing. Do you realize the f***ing crisis here? And you will be next. Unless you subscribe, like the video, and turn on notifications right now. Or else what? You'll aggressively scream another man's name for several hours? Kakarot! Kakarot! Now although it's rare for me to ever be taken back by a destroyer's actions, it would appear as though Universe 15's God of Destruction Gardox had went and did exactly that, and to use one's family as a chess piece in the way Gardox was shown using Pan to get to Gohan was simply cruel, and in the face of such manipulation, it is easy to give in to one's own anger and spiral down such a reckless path, for if Gohan wishes to endure and ensure his survival along with his daughters, then it all boils down to Gohan to remain composed under such extreme pressures, for if he isn't able to pull through by overcoming Gardox's twisted game, then this could very well mean the very end of Gohan as we all know it. Our story now continues back on Beerus' planet following the initial battle involving Ultra Ego Vegeta and Universe 14's God of Destruction Cobras, as with Whis now shown having to insert himself in going as far as to heal Vegeta was when Whis then went on to respond, You know, I must say, your victory over Lord Cobras is nothing short of remarkable, Vegeta, for it's not every day that a mortal is shown besting a God of Destruction like that in battle, so I must admit that I am rather very impressed that you were able to go and do it. And so how do you feel after such a monument? Monumental victory and acknowledgement, with Vegeta responding, While well, facing off against such a formidable opponent was by far no easy task for me to manage, as his control over destruction was certainly far greater when compared to mine, which had only then forced me to rethink my strategy during the middle of our battle. And while his power felt overwhelming at times, Vegeta continues, It was his skillful use of his power that had posed the real challenge, so I had to disrupt his focus and attack him psychologically to gain the advantage, because if I didn't, well then he likely would have overtaken me completely and destroyed me during our second battle, with Whis responding, And so you went and did exactly as Lord Beerus had instructed for you to do, which was to allow yourself to always keep your mind on destruction while throwing Lord Cobras off of his by getting him to focus more on his emotions rather than the art of destruction itself. For it's a very rare case if I may add, but a very smart battle strategy indeed, Vegeta, with Vegeta responding, It was, but I know that this isn't over between us, for I must continue to train and hone my destructive powers if I wish to stand a better chance the next time we fight. And as I know that there is more for me to achieve, so I can't let this victory be what gets to my head, especially now. Which, speaking of Lord Beerus, did something happen while I was away? Vegeta went on to question. He looked as though there was something that was bothering him, on top of the fact that he also looked as though he was involved in some kind of a fight. So did something happen to him while I was away in Universe 14, for he appeared very angry but also very quiet, which is quite unusual of Lord Beerus, Vegeta continues, and especially during situations like the one that had taken place here with Cobras, so did I happen to miss something or what? With Whis responding, well, there's quite a lot for us to unpack here while you've been away, but Lord Beerus is currently over there, Whis went on to point out, for I'd assume that he wishes not to be bothered at this time, for while you were taken within Universe 14, there were several significant 
developments that had taken place here, with Universe 13's God of Destruction Reno being one of them, as he arrived with a special sanction from the Grand Priest in challenging Lord Beerus to a battle which was a confrontation that was quite unprecedented and unexpected to say the least. And so while giving it his best with such short notice, Lord Reno didn't just defeat Lord Beerus, but had went as far as to force him into submission in front of the other resurrected Gods of Destruction, which was a sight that was rather unsettling for all those who had witnessed, especially for Lord Beerus once it was all said and done. Wait, are you serious? Vegeta went on to then question. So Universe 13's Destroyer was actually given the green light to go and fight Lord Beerus, and he actually beat him in front of the other revived Gods of Destruction as well? But how did this happen? I thought Lord Beerus was supposed to be one of the strongest destroyers among the entire lineup. And so what happened with Whis responding, well, he was, but over the years with Lord Beerus glossing over and overlooking his training along with focusing on other things, as he allowed for his lazy nature to get the better of him and causing him to forget about his title mostly, but I do have a feeling that this won't be the case with him for long, especially if what my gut is telling me is true, then I'm pretty sure that this was exactly what Lord Beerus had needed in order to get him back into prime condition. Yeah, it was honestly pretty rough to watch Lord Beerus go down the way he did Goku went on to then add, but he also had seemed to give off this really weird sense of tension, as I'm not really sure on what Lord Beerus plans to go and do now, but is it me, or did you guys happen to also sense that strange energy signature that appeared from out of nowhere too? And well, because I'm not really sure on what to make of it since there was so much that was going on around here at once, but it kind of felt like it was coming from Earth as well. Did anyone else happen to feel that? With Broly having to then chime in, you weren't the only one who went and sensed that because I went and sensed it too. And while it happened within the moment, it felt like it came from a Saiyan. With Goku responding, you think it came from a Saiyan, but the only Saiyan that I would figure for a power like that to come from would be Gohan, but, well, I never felt a power like that come from Gohan before, so do you think something happened back on Earth with Whis having to then respond? Well, actually, come to think of it, I did happen to sense something that appeared to be coming from planet Earth as well, so maybe we should, but then, it was yet again now from out of nowhere with a gigantic burst being shown having to happen behind Whis was when Whis then went on to continue, no dear, well I guess and went and spoke too soon now, didn't I? And as I wonder now on who that could be, well today sure seems to have been an eventful day for us here now, hasn't it? Oh, come on, you've got to be kidding me, Vegeta then went on to quickly shout. Don't tell me that more of these destroyers are coming here now, and just what the hell is going on around here today? With Goku responding, oh great, well I'm hoping that this isn't another one of those really angry gods like that Lord Primos destroyer, cuz, well, he nearly went and started a fight with Broly, oh, we can't seem to catch a break around here since these destroyers have been revived, oh, and so hang on, guys, but then, it was only to the sudden shock and surprise of everyone there, where the entities that were shown having to arrive were none other than Universe 6's Champa and Vados, as Champa went on to then respond, well, 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 I just had to come and see it for myself to believe it, but I hope that we're not too late for the party. And so now, where is he? Cause I don't seem to see my loudmouth brother anywhere, Vados, but is it true, Whis? Of all the times that I could have been there to witness something, this has to without a doubt be a moment that I just die to see unfold. And so are we late? With Goku then having to chime in, hey, wait a minute, that isn't one of those newly revived gods of destruction from earlier, that's Lord Champa. What's Lord Champa? But what could Champa want by coming here, Vegeta? to questions, as Whis went on to then respond, well, this is most certainly an unexpected but yet welcoming surprise. Then so greetings, Lord Champa. It's so good to see you again, as I do recall the last time that we were shown having to see each other was during the event of the Tournament of Power. And so it's good to see you. Now, what do I owe you the pleasure of here today, Lord Champa? For I assume that you are here to simply come and say hello, with Champa responding, you've never been one to lie, Whis, so I trust that you can point me into the direction on showing me where my lousy no good brother Beerus is at the moment and make it quick. No, oh, hey there Lord Champa, Goku went on to wave by shouting. It's been a really long time since we saw you and so
so it's really good to see you again. And so I really hope that you know that we haven't forgotten about your universe either because we're really looking forward to fighting them all again one day. And hopefully it's one day soon with Chompa responding, Oh, it's you again. How could I forget? Oh, why are you always on Beerus's planet, Saiyan? Don't you have anything else better to do than to always want to fight someone or cause some kind of a multiversal catastrophe? So you're supposed to be another one of those gods of destruction too? Broly went on to approach by looking on down and pointing. You don't look like much of a destroyer. You look just like that other cat, uh, Lord Beerus, but you're much fatter than he is and much more pudgy looking with an irritated Champa responding, What did you just say to me? Are you serious? Is he serious? How dare you? And just who in the Yemma are you supposed to be? I don't ever recall seeing this big stupid face at either of our tournaments, so how dare you disrespect me? Eh, sorry about that, Lord Champa, but he's kinda new to the whole gods thing, Goku went on to quickly butt in. But this here is Broly, and he's a Saiyan too, just like me and Vegeta. And so don't worry about him, Broly doesn't mean any harm by what he said, you know? Another Saiyan? Uh, well, I don't care, you hear me? So you're lucky that I'm here to laugh at my brother, otherwise you two would get it, and so now where is he? And as I didn't come here to be insulted by idiots, and so now where's Beerus? Although I would advise for you to watch what you say around Lord Beerus, especially now after what was shown having to take place here, but if you really want to know, then he is currently over there in his home where I'd assume he is prepping as he looks to make his next move, with Chompa responding, Prepping, huh? Then the rumors going around of how badly Lord Reno had beaten him must have really fired him up then, and especially if he's contemplating something, with Vados having to chime in, Right, and I second this, as you should know firsthand on just how serious and just how dangerous your brother Lord Beerus can be, and especially when he finds himself being driven towards something with cause, and so I wonder as to what he'll do next. Yeah, well I can't say that I'm surprised, Chompa went on to then continue, and especially since I always tried to tell Beerus that someone was going to come along and shut that big stupid mouth of his, and so for his sake, he better be thankful that it wasn't me who went in, but then, it was once again now from out of nowhere with a giant burst now being shown having to occur behind Vados and Champa was when Vados then went on to chime in, oh, and what's this? Well, it looks as though we may not be the only visitors who intended on coming here after all. In which surprisingly enough now from out of nowhere having to come back onto Beerus's planet was none other than the angel of Universe 15 that went by the name of Rizal, as Rizal went on to then respond, ah, uh, but of course, I knew that I had sensed your life force on this planet, sister. It's been a very long time now, hasn't it, Vados? Yes. Ah, good. So Beerus's mortals are both still here, with of course the addition of a third, I see. No, and hello again there, Whis. It's so tragic to hear about what happened to poor old Beerus, and as I do hope that he is able to get well soon, because Lord Ferrix certainly does look forward in having a few words with him, but of course that's not why I'm here, actually, so it's better if I just go and cut to the chase then, Rizal continues. Hey, I remember that Angel Chompa went on to then respond, and as I can't seem to recall the last time that I had gone as far as to see him, let alone hear Lord Ferrix's name either, so what could he possibly be doing here, with Whis responding, well that's a bit strange, as you were just here, Rizal, and so now tell us on why you have returned, with Angel Rizal responding, well although Lord Ferrix has some, well, dare I say, unresolved issues with Lord Beerus, he is not the reason actually on why I've returned, but in fact, Lord Ferrix requests for Lord Beerus's mortals to report back with me into Universe 16 right this moment, Rizal continues, and now as to why, well I'll just leave that up to Lord Ferrix to decide, but I am here simply to bring the mortals into the 16th universe immediately. In which during this time when venturing back on over and seeing Gohan and Piccolo now arrive within universe 15 was when Angel Vodko then went on to respond, Alright, there we are now, as I didn't expect for our trip back from universe 7 to be so quick, but nevertheless, I welcome you mortals both to Lord Gardox's domain, or as he would famously phrase it, the world of magic and despair. Oh, and do make sure to watch your step when roaming around here, Vodko continues by the way, for you might want to go and take a look around you for context, with Gohan having to then respond, Hey, are you alright, Piccolo? I wasn't expecting for you to grab on when you did, but thanks for coming here with me and tracking that bastard down. Yeah, don't sweat it, Piccolo responds. 
so I'm fine, but we need to hurry and start looking for Pan immediately, with Gohan then having to question... Right. Hey you, where's Lord Gardox and where did he go and take my daughter? Because if I'm the one that he wants, then he could let my daughter go and come handle business with me instead, with Vatko responding... Now although I understand your frustrations as a father, if Lord Gardox intends for you to earn your way back into getting her from him, then you must prove it, with Vatko continuing... But do rest assured that she will be under my watchful eye during your stay. However, it's important to note that you must comply with Lord Gardox's rules and the tales that he lays out for you if you wish to ensure your daughter's safety. And while Pan remains fine for now, her continued safety hinges on Gohan's performance. Almost kind of like a binding agreement, and deviation from it could have dire consequences, mortals. And while I don't have a personal gripe with Universe 7's God of Destruction, Lord Gardox on the other hand does. And it's because of their long and rich history, especially after Gardox was previously destroyed as I remained inactive, that Lord Gardox had learned of Beerus' hurtful and condescending words, that he now looks to do almost anything and everything that he could just to simply get back and hurt Lord Beerus in any possible way that he can, even if that means going as far as hurting his strongest and most valuable mortals to achieve it, with Piccolo responding, and All of this because of how Lord Beerus had talked about him after he was destroyed? And just how low can this God of Destruction go if he's willing to run the risk of getting innocent children involved? With Gohan responding, He's completely out of his mind is what he is. And so do you see anything, Piccolo? Because I can't seem to get a lock on Pan's energy anywhere. And so how do we know that Pan is even out here to begin with if the only thing that we seem to be looking at here are volcanoes and molten lava everywhere? Well, color me green. You two numbskulls actually made it, Gardox went on to then respond. Up here, Universe 7! Welcome to my universe, mortals, because now that you're both here, and especially you, Mr. I wasn't trained by Beerus, as now the game can finally begin. Look, there they are, Gohan went on to respond. Pan! Don't worry, I'll be right over there, so just sit tight! Well, I wouldn't go that far if I were you, because we have yet to start our three stages of hell game, so listen Listen closely. Now to earn your freedom and reach your daughter, you must pass all three of the challenges that I've designed for you, Gohan. And, well, I guess since the Namekian is here too, you can use him as backup because you're going to need it either way. Oh, and just for the record without giving too much away, each of these three stages, assuming that you even get past one, will essentially mirror the emotional struggles that you've endured in having you relive your most troubling experiences, Gardox continues. And as you see, the first stage will be timed in seeing how fast you are able to break free and survive, while the final two stages will ensure that you are tested to the highest possible degree. And if you somehow manage to prove your worth and complete my game, then I'll award you a prize and go and set you all free. Sound good? I mean, I kinda feel bad for you in a way, but hey, it's like Beerus often said, better him than me, right Papa Gohan? Hiya Papa, look here, Pan went on to then respond. Bond. Mr. Green is showing me his really awesome collection of playing cards with Gardox continuing. Oh, and don't worry about the girl, for she'll be right here waiting for you in case you happen to actually pass with flying colors. And so now, are the two of you ready for the games to begin? Because I certainly am, for it's been a while since I actually had guests on my planet like this, and so I'm ready whenever you are. Go on, listen, Pan is completely unaware of the danger that she is in, for she doesn't understand that this little god of destruction is lying to her and making her actually believe that he's her friend. And on top of it, I think he's using some kind of a hypnotic technique in going as far as to warp her mind into thinking that he's actually her friend when he's only using her as bait to draw you into his sick game, Piccolo continues. So we've got to go all out here and leave nothing behind so that way we can go back home. As Gardox went on to then continue, now let's see on which card we will go and use first. Ooh! I think this one ought to be a good enough stage for these mortals to go and experience first. And not to mention the color on this guy here, for I didn't know their history dates all the way back to when this Gohan was a kid. Well, this ought to be good. And to top it all off, lastly, since I'm feeling a bit spicy here, I'll go and give
give them five minutes to complete stage one of our game, which is more than enough time for me to go and watch them fail. Oh, hold on now. And what's this, Gardox questions? In which with Piccolo and Gohan not looking to waste any more time by from there being shown having to unleash their most powerful transformations was when Gardox then went on to continue. Wait a minute, could that be the power that I had sensed on Beerus' world? Yes, but of course. So this mortal was in fact telling the truth. For that there is the exact same energy that I felt back in Universe 7. So Beerus' universe does in fact happen to house mortals who can be compared to a destroyer in power. Well, now you have my attention, mortal. But I doubt that you'll actually be cunning and skillful enough to survive what's coming, with Orange Piccolo and Beast Gohan then shown charging towards Gardox with Gohan shouting, THE HELL WITH YOUR STUPID GAMES, DESTROYER! So give my daughter back to me right now and I'll gladly give you what you've been asking for, with Orange Piccolo then shouting, NOW LEAVE THE LITTLE ONE OUT OF THIS AND COME AND SEE WHAT WE'RE ALL ABOUT IF YOU'RE THAT OBSESSED WITH GETTING BACK AT LORD BEERUS, DESTROYER! Hey, Mr. Green, Pan went on to then ask, Why are my papa and Uncle Piccolo so angry at you? You said that they would have a lot of fun, but they don't look like they're having any fun at all, so why do they want me to get away from you? With Gardox responding, No, they're just jealous, kid. Now keep quiet and watch as they undergo stage number one. In which from out of nowhere now, with one of Gardox's cards now being shown having to glow as Gohan and Piccolo made their way towards it, was when Gardox then went on to continue, Well, all right now, mortals, and here we go. And so good luck, and remember, you only have five minutes to find your way out and break free before time runs out, as survival entails on finding your way back or destroying your enemy, and so now enjoy! In which moments after, with Gohan and Piccolo now seemingly having to find themselves exactly where they were shown having to meet Gardox back on Earth, was when Gohan then went on to question, what? what Where are we? What just happened? Hold on. Wait a minute. Are we back where we just were after destroying Cell Max on Earth? But why would he go and bring us both back to the Red Ribbon headquarters for? With Piccolo responding, I don't think he did. This may in fact look and feel like planet Earth, but let's not gloss over the fact that this destroyer is not above creating a false reality as a part of his twisted game, as this could very well be a trap for all we know, Piccolo continues. And so either that or he probably sent us both into a parallel reality, in which either way, let's try and stay sharp and unravel the first of his three stages because we only have five minutes and we can't afford to, but then, it was only from out of nowhere with a straight energy blast now shown colliding with Piccolo was when Gohan then went on to shout, What in the world? Oh no, Piccolo! Piccolo, are you alright? Oh, and just where in the world did that blast just come from? And it was dangerously accurate and incredibly dense too. Oh, talk to me, Piccolo, are you okay? With Piccolo responding, Hurry, Gohan, we, we don't have time. Oh, I'm sorry, was I interrupting something a familiar voice went on to then question? Because here I was starting to wonder on when you were going to show your face. And especially now since you're all that's left after destroying your father, Vegeta, and Broly, monkey. Oh, what's wrong, Gohan? You look like you've seen a ghost, with the surprised Gohan being shown turning his head and responding, No, but that's impossible. Is that really you, Frieza? But it just can't be. And that form and power, what is this? And what do you mean by all that's left? What did you go and do to the others, Frieza? Oh, haven't you heard? They're all dead, Black Frieza responds. Or perhaps you weren't around when I went and slaughtered them all in this world. Or maybe you're just a mere reflection from another time. Well, either way, now that you are all that's left who is standing in my way aside from that tin can of an android down there, here is where your final chapter in our very long story ends, Saiyan. And even though this new form of yours is unknown to me, the form and power which you see here standing before you is far more superior than yours. But I'm in no hurry, Frieza continues, as I intend to make you 
suffer just like your father had suffered. And so what do you say we go and proceed as fate had intended and finally put our historic story to rest, Gohan? As it was only right then and there now during that moment where the Beyond Dragon Ball Super story of the resurrected Fallen Gods of Destruction, the Universe 15 saga manga chapter number two special then comes to a close. Actually, I'll go and take it from here as I do want to go as far as to address something with all of our dear viewers at the moment. As before I go and give you the following information, if you aren't already a member of Unreal's Patreon community, then you are truly missing out on so much without you even knowing. As not only is the next episode already on the page, but if you want to support all of the content that you see and gain access to tons of exclusives along the way, then we do encourage for you all to become a members of our Patreon community today, for we will link it all down in the description box below and pinned comment section. While it's interesting to see how Universe 16's God of Destruction Ferex had went and ordered for his angel to go and gather Lord Beerus's most powerful warriors in wanting to have a word with them, when venturing back over to Gohan and Piccolo, it has now become very clear to us all that with Universe 15's destroyer Gardox confirming his suspicions over Gohan's unusual power, especially when compared to a god's, Lord Gardox is aiming to push Gohan to his breaking point as punishment for Lord Beerus's words which Lord Gardox plans to take great enjoyment in. And with Black Frieza being their very first opponent, you do not want to miss out in seeing as to what happens next. So we hope that you all enjoyed as before you leave, do make sure to give this video a thumbs up by smashing that like button on your way out, as well as subscribing to Unreal and Gaming's channel in case you are new around here. We thank you all for watching and hope you all have a wonderful day everyone, as we'll see you all in the next one. Hello! Did you know that you can stay up to date with the latest Dragon Ball content by simply subscribing to Unreal End Gaming? Also, don't forget to follow on these social media platforms, you sexy son of a bitch. Roshi! Silent Cell, me and the fans are having a moment. That's right. I know what you want. Extra long, thick Dragon Ball content. Quality reviews with flawless editing. Yeah. Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? You dirty bitch. Roshi, the fuck? God damn it, I need them to subscribe, Cell. And we're demonetized. Yeah, screw it. Let's cut to the video.